All right, so let's apply depolarization, repolarization to the neuromuscular junction. So we're gonna look at this in two phases. So nervous cell, so here's our neuron. This is our synaptic, presynaptic side. Here's our postsynaptic side on the sarcolemma. So this is the muscle cell. So this represents our neuromuscular junction. So what we're gonna describe here is the excitation phase of excitation contraction coupling. All right. I am not intending any of these steps to go along with the book. I don't want it, don't hold me responsible for the numbers. Just in kind of sequence, these are the events that have to happen. So as we previously described, what you would have is an action potential running down the length of the axon. So here's our action potential. So what hap potential? Can't spell and talk at the same time. So what happens when this action potential gets to this presynaptic space? Okay, so in sequence, a couple of things have to happen. One, and this is where everyone wants to talk about calcium. So calcium comes into that presynaptic space and that's how the depolarization plays itself out in the presynaptic space. Um, kind of glossing over a couple of the things that have to happen. The end result of that calcium coming in is that neurotransmitter gets released and the neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, in order to work, has to bind to an acetylcholine receptor. So acetylcholine, picture is just a message, crosses the gap, binds to the receptor. Now, in the case of the acetylcholine receptor, the response is immediate and it causes sodium to rush into the cell, into that sarcolemma. And so what's happened in this, in this set, in this step, excuse me, can't talk today, is that we've converted the signal from the nervous side to the muscular side. And so what this leads to is an action potential, and this is potential, there I did it again, in the muscle membrane. Now, all of the same things that we've already discussed that happen in an action potential in the neuron happen in an action potential in the muscle cell. And just like in an axon, if we stimulate one part of the sarcolemma, because this whole sarcolemma conducts electricity, that electricity will be passed along the entire length of this sarcolemma membrane. And so this sarcolemma will transmit this action potential down the length of the sarcolemma. Now, the sarcolemma covers the length, but how do we get down into the width of that space? And so the first thing that we would encounter, and we would see this depolarizing wave hit, is the T-tubule. The T in T-tubule stands for transverse. Transverse carries it across. And we hit this space where the T-tubule kind of comes in contact with, I'm gonna abbreviate it SR for sarcoplasmic reticulum. All right, we've already talked about it before. Up here, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, there is a ton of calcium built up. And so as this depolarizing wave comes down the T-tubule, it eventually depolarizes the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this is kind of the end of the excitation phase, but the end of that excitation phase happens as calcium is released, calcium released, real. Oh, oh you couldn't even have seen that. I probably could have gotten away with it. Released into muscle. So that's our excitation side of the contraction.